the CEO of Postalytics. Uh, Postalytics is a direct mail automation software company. And, and so what we are doing is uh, automating the process of creating direct mail campaigns that are sent through the uh, through printers and then, and then the postal service and, and then the tracking of those campaigns uh, for both uh, the delivery of the mail as well as the response to those direct mail campaigns. And so we're really applying you know, modern SaaS technology to an older marketing channel uh, that is still highly effective, uh, but uh, has had a lack of technology applied to it. And, and so, so that's really, uh, you know, the mission really at Postalytics is to remove the friction from direct mail marketing at, at a very high level. And uh, at, at a personal level, you know, m- my primary focus is on being a husband, father, and a friend. If I can do those things well, then I'm, I'm a happy guy. Awesome. That's a really cool introduction. But about direct mail. So I was just telling Eric right before the episode that my brain, my Gen Z brain doesn't quite compute it. So what's up with it? How is it doing nowadays? Yeah, great question. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because uh, I often will speak with marketers uh, who say that they're very data driven. And, uh, and, and so they like to make decisions based on the data. And then when I tell them about, you know, postlytics and direct mail, they say, oh, you know, I don't look at the, at the mail. Uh, and I say, but did you look at the data? <laughs> uh, because <laughs> the data uh, shows that uh, direct mail marketing has not only um, uh, it continued to be an effective marketing channel, but its effectiveness has increased over the last 15 years. And uh, there are several reasons for that, uh, but primarily because there's less mail in your mailbox. Mm, okay, I've seen that. And, and, and so the mail that does come uh, has a, a bigger impact on the average recipient mm-hmm. than uh, the mail that came 15 or 20 years ago. Mm. And, right. and so while this is happening, while the amount of mail in your mailbox has decreased, Tell me about the number of emails you get in a day. Sure. So, so this number actually is growing. So, so it's definitely, in my case, I would say that it's more than 10 messages a day. I would say there's more than 30 messages a day. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I get about 300 emails in a day. Wow. Okay. So it means that you are subscribed to more companies than I am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but but internal emails as well. You know the the number of yeah. I mean, it, it's it's really overwhelming. You know the number of of messages, the number of digital ads that you receive on a daily basis has been estimated. Uh, the average uh, view of screens, mm-hmm. phone, mm-hmm. television, etc., uh, on average about five thousand advertisements in a day. Okay. The average and, and so so as as these channels have been. Uh, overwhelmed with with activity and, and energy and investment, uh, the, the direct mail channel uh, has been largely ignored. And so marketers that are trying to find ways to stand out and trying to find ways to complement their email marketing, their digital marketing, are learning that they can use direct mail in a targeted way, in a very smart and, and new effective way uh, to drive the overall response rate of their campaigns higher uh, by you know using multiple channels and using a physical channel that that where, where people actually touch the message and hold it in their hand and and so uh, so that's really what's happening with direct mail and, and as a matter of fact the the surveys say that the gen Z audience, actually enjoys getting something because it's so rare that, that they actually receive something in the mail. And so the brands that they are uh, uh, familiar with, brands that Gen Z recipients are interested in, uh, have a highly effective direct mail campaigns uh, because uh, you know if, if you have expressed interest in a particular brand, 
reaches you. It, it, it speaks to your values, to your aspirations. And you receive something that is colorful and, uh, and, and that you hold in your hand. It makes a deeper brand impression on your brain. And, and so it, this is all part of the reason why direct mail is being used in this kind of new smart way. Uh, that uh, is is very effective. I mean, I gotta agree with it. I, I I'm always very happy to hold things in my hands as long as those things are relevant. Which kind of we kind of touched upon this when you've mentioned data already that we are very data driven or we try to be. So when you want to target audience better or you want to personalize your direct mail better. Um, how can you do that? It's not like you're going to come to a multi-apartment block and these people are going to get your mail, but these people are not going to get. So how do you get this first or zero party data? Well, uh, often uh, uh, companies are mailing to their own customers. And, and, and that's where technology has really assisted uh, in in. Uh, using tools like Postalytics, direct mail automation tools are able to plug in to the CRM systems, marketing automation tools such as Get, Get Response, and and then send individual pieces of mail out one at a time. Oh wow, one at a time. Using exactly using workflows, using automation that is built into the marketing automation or the CRM. And, and so I'll, I'll give you a great example. One of our uh, customers uh, has uh, is a uh, it's an e-commerce company, B two B e-commerce, and they 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 sell products to uh, uh, fitness centers uh, and workout facilities all over the U.S. They have thirty thousand customers all over the U.S. And uh, they've had a uh, an established win back email campaign. That was is designed to target customers, existing customers who have not purchased for over six months. Okay. And and so that existing email campaign was running for a couple of years, and they were looking for a way to to target the people that are not opening their emails. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. And and so so they plugged Postalytics, a four touch. Postalytics postcard campaign into that workflow that was already established for email. Mm -hmm. And they sent out four large oversized postcards to this audience with a big call to action and a QR code to respond. And this campaign took the existing win back and drove the ROI up. 150 percent. Hmm. Wow, brilliant! Just by having an automated way to contact the email non-openers mm -hmm. at scale, one at a time. That sounds really cool. It also sounds like I've never received like a direct mail piece that would contain a CTA in it. So that <laughs> that's something to think about. <laughs> Maybe it's a, you know it's a difference between the American market and European. And by European, I actually mean Polish because this is where I live and this is where I get my direct mail. And uh, what I've seen is actually that usually local businesses from the area would target you with some direct mail. So it's going to be like you know a sort of like a first touch. So it's not going to be segment like you can't see any segmentation apart from the area. So it's going to be in the radius of maybe five kilometers. So I've seen it with restaurants, with bars, but you know, like when it comes to e-commerce, nope, I, I haven't seen any direct communication from brands that I really like, appreciate, and I've been a fan of. So I think that there is a, there is a lot to, you know, basically there is room for improvement, right? But it's interesting because I do get a lot of e-commerce promo. Well, okay, maybe not a lot of, but for example, Yves Rocher does a really good job. Like they always send you physical certificates you can later exchange for gifts or you get a physical code on. So they do this kind of multi-channel thing where you get an SMS notification and if you ignored it, then you're going to receive a plastic thing. I always get it for my birthday, always very pleasant. But I would say that birthday 
is about it. It's about as far as you can personalize. Okay, cool. So congrats, because maybe they have like a different and special approach towards women. And, you know, the brands that I enjoy, it's like they, they just like decide, ah, no, he's not going to open it anyways. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the uh, sort of uh, top of the funnel awareness and lead generation campaigns that you discuss, uh, uh, they all happen here in the States as well. And, and you know, that's, that's more of a traditional direct mail approach. And, and, and those campaigns are effective, right? So when a new restaurant opens nearby, uh, you know, you get something in the mail saying, hey, you know, um, bring this coupon in and get a free drink or get a free dessert or whatever the case may be, those campaigns tend to perform very well. Uh, and and um, so, you know, we help in automating those campaigns. You know, in our software, you can, you can acquire lists and uh, of geographies and you can hone them down by demographic uh, factors, homeowners, renters, uh, income levels, all sorts of different uh, demographics, and then you can target uh, those types of top of the funnel uh, campaigns. But I, I think where where the real innovation is happening is uh -huh. really more <clears throat> in these automated workflow driven campaigns, where direct mail works in conjunction with uh, the email and digital channels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Dennis, you've mentioned that part of your mission at Postalytics is to connect direct mail with email. So how do you do that? Yeah, so uh, what we have done is uh, we have built um, a, a SaaS-based software tool uh, that enables marketers to construct direct mail campaigns, uh, creative, uh, and, and go through an entire process right within our software. So you could be a, you know, a, a marketing manager uh, sitting in a cafe uh, on your laptop, drag and drop, pull together a postcard, a letter, uh, other types of direct mail, and then uh, use our APIs to connect to CRM, marketing automation tools, so that all of the segmentation, all of the knowledge of your clients okay. is from that one central location, right? And, and so we're able to then send mail to uh, people that are a part of lists that you have created or who are hitting a particular step of a workflow uh, or an automation so that uh, you can send out Essentially, from a technology standpoint, a webhook, right? That that will hit our software and say, "Okay, send this postcard to Anna, you know, right now." And and then our software will take that information, including you know your name and address, but also other personalization data that you map to come out of your marketing automation. So, you know, let's say we know Anna's birthday. We're going to say happy birthday on January 5th. Uh, you know, please, you know, redeem this coupon at the local bar and uh, or, you know, use any data that you have about your clients. Your last purchase was this. We recommend taking a look at this. Uh, all sorts of ways that you can use uh, personalization in the creative, both from a uh, uh, explicit standpoint, meaning print the birthday, or from a dynamic standpoint, saying, so anybody who's a VIP customer, print this block of text with this image. And, and, and so all of that can be configured right within the software. The connection to the CRM and marketing automation tool and then the campaigns are configured just as you would set up an email campaign. Imagine when you send an email campaign, you're building creative, you're taking data, it all get merges together and it's sent out to email servers. Mm -hmm. yep. With Postalytics, you're taking creative that you build, you're merging it with data, 
it is sending out to a network of printers spread out that act like email servers, essentially. So yeah, that was my question. That was my big question as to the um, low, or should I say the high ROI of email is that the production value is very low, sometimes zero. So here you have to produce a physical card or a letter or whatever. So do you at Postalytics also offer some kind of relationship with printers or some kind of dedicated services? How do how do people get the end product on the dedicated date without many setbacks? Yes, yes. So uh, so Postalytics is an all-inclusive service that includes the printing and the postage and the mailing. Awesome. And and so there's a big back end to this, as you can imagine. Yeah, <laughs> sounds like. Yeah, so, so and that's really a big part of the vision of removing friction from this process. When, when you send an email campaign, you're not going and uh, creating a business relationship with the email servers individually, right? You're not worrying about uh, the internet protocol being followed for the email. Well, with Postalytics, you're not worrying about finding a printer. You're not worrying about making sure that the mail pieces are built in a way that is compliant with the postal service. And you're not worried about optimizing the um, the, the uh, postage. We take care of all of that. You just worry about the creative. You worry about doing great marketing. Forget about the production. We take care of that. Wow, that sounds really cool. And you have also some automated processes for the production or just an in-house team that takes care of it? No, the, the, the software that is built to, uh, to create, build the creative uh, and, and all the creative it is conforming to the local postage requirements wherever we're mailing. We're, we're currently in the U.S. and Canada. And so... And both nations uh, have requirements about where the address has to be and how big the space has to be for a barcode to be attached, all sorts of things. All of that is templatized and locked down, so you can't make a mistake. And then the, what the software does, it pulls the creative together, which is stored in HTML, just like with an email. HTML and data come together and we generate high resolution PDFs for every single piece of mail. It goes into a queue and the queue gets sent out across the country to different printers. And then they print locally and your mail gets mixed together with mail from hundreds of other customers so that you don't have to worry about batching and getting bulk rates and all of this. It's it's all taken care of. That's why you can send one piece of mail at a reasonable price, because we're taking that one piece of mail and mixing it with, um, let's say, you know, a, a six by nine inch postcard. Um, that you know, that's a U.S. Uh, uh, phrase, obviously. Uh, but that's one six by nine postcard that you send is being merged with thousands of others, and and being sent out in bulk at a reasonable price. And so that's how we are able to um, provide in the economics that make this whole thing work. Awesome. I recently, because I'm thinking about, I don't have you know, like much of experience with combining the digital and, and direct mail, uh, but a month ago, um, I wanted to go, there was a concert I was interested in, so I bought tickets online. And I had two options, obviously. Like, you know, I could either like download the PDF with a ticket, or I could just choose this paper ticket that I can collect later on, just you know, have it with me. So that was interesting because I wanted to have this physical ticket with me because you know I I, I thought that it's gonna be a cool concert. So so I I you know, I just wanna uh hold it later on um and first i it took like seven days to receive the ticket and there was some malfunction of a system i believe because after four days i got another 
uh, direct mail with a ticket. And this time it was the valid ticket because the tickets that they sent me for the first time, <laughs> well, it turned out that there was some mistake or, or I don't know. So actually I just received the physical copy just the, a day before the ticket. And it was in another town. So, you know, I was lucky to actually get it on time. So uh, I know that it might be a challenge because combining these two worlds, like, you know, online and offline is is definitely a challenge, but but I can totally get the, the, the benefits. And, and I really appreciate the vision and actually appreciate the fact that you are tackling this problem right now. Well, we think it's a big problem and, and there's a lot of complexity. You know, that, that back end is, there's a lot of moving parts and, and there is no perfect production system, right? You know, anytime there's a physical element, there's, you know, printers can break and the postal service can have a problem. But, but overall, you know, uh, in, in the U S and Canada, uh, 98% of the mail is delivered within certain time frames, And so that you can plan around them, uh, Holiday times are difficult, uh, particularly in the U.S. with some particular areas. Uh, but but generally, you can you can plan your campaigns in a, in a way that uh, will ensure that mail is being delivered on a timely basis. And and we've we've created some tools that then allow uh, the recipients to respond online. And and so um, and this is how. Uh, we are designing our response measurement to direct mail campaigns. And so our first tool uh, that we've introduced is a personalized QR code. So if you were both in a campaign that was being sent, you would get, say, this letter uh, that comes in the mail and and uh, the letter uh, would contain a QR code uh, as a part of the creative, as the call to action. You scan that QR code. Eric, your QR code is different than Anna's. And so when you hit it, we actually know that this was Anna from this particular letter, from this particular campaign that hit the QR code and went to this landing page. And then we've built a, a, a tracking tool to then watch Anna migrate through the uh, process to the conversion landing page. And, and so then we're able to capture this data about the response to this particular letter at the individual recipient level, just like you would with email. And then, uh, so we provide you know statistical information about what is working, what is not working. We're also able to send that data back to the CRM and marketing automation tools through our APIs. So then your marketing automation tool says, oh, Anna responded to this particular letter. And then that can inform the next step of a workflow of an automation. Yeah, that sounds amazing because, you know, historically we would compare uh, email against direct mail, and actually that would be the the one of the main reasons to actually you know focus on email. That actually you can track it, you can measure it, and then you can basically you know segment your audience properly. You've got all the data in the CRM, so obviously you can not only collect that data, but but also like you know draw conclusions. But here, as you're saying, it's it's just like now we are uh, with Postalytics. We can actually go multi-channel here and we can actually think about like how these two channels can support each other and not like compete against each other. That's correct. That That is the big message. Yes. Sorry. Um, I was just going to ask, is there any way to also track customers who have, for example, received the four cards from you, physical ones? Uh, they did not really scan the QR code because they were busy because life gets in a way, right? But Obviously, after receiving a certain amount of letters, you kind of have the brand in your mind at the back of your at the back of your head. So a few months later, for example, they were looking for a software and they decided to come back to the product thanks to those letters, but not through the QR code you sent. Can you measure those? Yes. So so that is what is referred to um, uh, in Postalytics uh, as a matchback analysis. And so what, uh, what you're able to do is analyze who the mail was sent to 
and then compare that to your conversion goal, whether that is, it can be sales, it could be a purchase, uh, it could be downloads of, uh, you know, a white paper or, you know, anything else. And, and then you are able to provide, you know, partial attribution, right, uh, by uh, doing that matchback analysis. Uh, and, and so that's a very common way of, of, of providing um, attribution in a multi-channel uh, environment. All right. That makes perfect sense. I'm just, I'm thinking about all the opportunities we have in the multi-channel nowadays, and it's still a very big thing. I know we're going more omni rather than multi this year, but opportunities are really endless here. Yes. Yes. I have a suggestion for, for, for all of us here, because um, before this episode, we actually, you know, we were constantly improving with Anna. So this time we asked, uh, you know, the community actually to help us a bit and to actually point us towards um, like the, the, the best possible context for, for our, you know, like uh, case study, for example. So um, definitely like most people chose fashion and apparel as the kind of like you know e-commerce context for for our discussion and i wanted actually to i wanted us to think about the ways we could actually use email and direct mail in the you know e-commerce fashion and apparel industry is it okay with you absolutely yes Cool. So actually, I thought that maybe we could then just, you know, use this this simple framework called uh, the loyalty loop. Um, I really like it because, you know, you have only like four stages there. And the first stage is actually the moment where actually people can, they probably, okay, let's assume that they do not know about your company. They do not know who you are. So actually here, this is where, you know, all the brand awareness is, is uh, important. So usually with email, so, you know, we would suggest uh, using Facebook, Instagram, you know, any sort of like social media platform and basically use ads to direct people uh, to your website or landing page. And, you know, when they actually, when they are interested, so they click the ad, right? Then they land on the website, they read the content and then they decide should I sign up for a newsletter or or not? Or or maybe I'm not interested. So is there any, like, you know, what is the role of direct mail at this particular stage? Yeah, so uh, direct mail is uh, very commonly used um, for brand awareness campaigns uh, as a complement to those digital ads. And, and so often what will happen is uh, they'll, they'll launch digital ads at the same time that a direct mail campaign is being sent. Mm, okay. And then what happens? Digital ads are running for targeting a particular demographic for say seven days. The direct mail campaign is being produced in the software. Uh, it is being then mailed. And so it's typically roughly about a seven day start to finish. So then you know, you've been seeing an ad on Instagram, you've been seeing an ad on Facebook for a week, and then all of a sudden a bright, colorful postcard shows up uh, that is reinforcing that exact same branding, messaging, call to action, that it's, it's all coordinated and, and, and focused on uh, delivering the, the same message through multiple channels and multiple touches over a one to two week period. And so that, that stage one, uh, that brand awareness, uh, direct mail has a role uh, because you are able to, uh, to acquire data of mailing data uh, and, and mail to people uh, on a cold basis, just like you can with digital ads. Are you, and, and so, so you, can, you can get those lists you can drill down and, and make those lists very, very granular regarding the demographic that you are targeting and the geographies that you're, start, you're targeting. And you can send those campaigns out as a complement to the digital ads that you are um, building the brand awareness around. Perfect. So there is a QR code on the postcard. And then, for example, I can just 
invite people to use the QR code to land on the website. And then immediately there is this connection between the data held in the QR code and whatever happens next on the website or on the landing page, right? That is correct. Yeah, that is correct. And, and so then, you know, if you respond and, and you uh, take the call to action, then maybe you get pulled out of the remaining steps of the campaign, right? Because you, you know, there's no more need to be bombarding you with messaging and, and uh, or, or particularly direct mail, right? Like, don't spend that money. Stop. And, and you know, you've accomplished your goal. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sounds amazing. Um, so then there is this other stage and it's like, um, you know, the moment when, where you do this active evaluation. So basically you compare products, right? So you, you definitely, you, you probably have several brands on your radar at this point and you want to compare, you know, who is like, well, actually, you know, what to buy, where to buy. Mm, so here is, let's say, that the, the part where, where we have uh, most examples in from email marketing, because once somebody signed up, right, then we can have those like welcome series that first we um, like invite people to create an email explaining your brand. So basically, you know, just, just making sure that people understand not only the products that you offer, but also like the philosophy behind the brand, you know, that basically you... Your brand is like people get some some sort of like connection, like sometimes even emotional connection, yeah, with, with your brand. So then um, it's going to be easier for them to choose you over competitors. Um, so yeah, here like you know, email marketing is 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 huge in this area. How about direct mail? When you want to like you know compare and and stand out from the competitors. So one of the things that we uh, see quite often with our customers is that they will complement their welcome series email with a, a a letter, a physical letter in an envelope from the CEO of the company, and mm-hmm. and the letter will often have a printed front and a back. The printed front will be. A couple of paragraphs from the CEO diving into, in the CEO's own words, the brand values, the broader mission of the organization. Why are we doing this? You know, why are we sending you this message? And thank you. Thank you for enrolling. You know, we look forward to serving you. And then on the back, We'll often see social proof. Mm, okay. Reviews printed on the back or a competitive matrix on the back. And so you're able to use both parts of that real estate in a very efficient way and, and you know, have a, a meaningful letter from an executive of the company and a picture. And, you know, what looks like a signature, you know, it's a font, but it looks like a signature. And it, and it's, it, it, it is a authentic way to communicate something. People know when you receive something in the mail, this, this was not cheap. This, this, this is meaningful that, you know, you're receiving something with some words from an executive about, about the broader mission, about why this is important. And then that social proof can be very, very valuable at this stage. Oh, yeah. Thank you for that. Because definitely, yeah, this is how you can stand out. So even if you like let people know that you do have a mission and vision and it's even like printed out. So it's it sounds, it, yeah, it sounds that you invested and you actively invest in this, right? I also think it's very cool that you suggest doing this at this stage specifically and not later on after the purchase for example because i was just thinking of the day when i was buying some bed sheets which kind of fits the fashion and apparel parts a little bit so 
once I got the sheet, it did have exactly what you described. It was a letter from the company owners explaining why they do it, who they are, how it's a small family business. And I was very moved with it. But at the same time, I've already bought from them. So they already had me. And if I got that at the stage when I was just considering a couple of brands, that might have been a thing that would totally persuade me to go in their direction. That's something I've never thought about it. And that's very exciting. Yeah, we should totally all try and do more of those things. Yes, yes. And I, I have another suggestion for post-purchase, but we will get to that. Exactly. But but also like thank you for uh, mentioning those like positive reviews and you know testimonials because during this evaluation phase, you, you definitely wanna like you, you basic this is the sort of like information that um proves to be really effective in email marketing. So I can imagine that in direct mail uh it's it's at least like you know equally efficient, effective. I think it's more it's more efficient because you don't expect it. Like you don't expect a letter with customer reviews. So that's really cool. I'm I'm very much amazed here. So so the the third stage here would be the actually the, the purchase. So you know now when when people okay they they know all they they need and they actually purchase the product and this is surprising. It's <laughs> but. Like most of the marketing communication, at least on the Polish market, just like it, it just ends there because like the goal is like, you know, to invite people to buy your product and then boom, it's like, it's over. It's, it's like, we're not friends anymore. Um, obviously there are some brands that, that, you know, they, they choose building relationships, but there's like a few of them. So vast majority of marketers, they just like, they don't, they don't just build a relationship beyond the purchase. Um, but, you know, what would you say? Is there, is there, because you've mentioned that actually it's very, it's a good idea actually to send direct mail to your customers. So what, what would you say? Okay. <clears throat> uh, I have a, uh, a, a very, uh, I believe, highly useful uh, uh, direct mail piece here at this stage. You send a smallest postcard uh, that is the least expensive, uh, and you have it triggered immediately upon purchase. Right, so you you make this purchase uh, bed linens. The uh, the trigger happens seven days later. You get this small postcard in the mail, and the postcard is uh, designed to talk about customer service. It's huh. not about anything else. It's about, are you using this the right way? Are you having any issues? And, and so what we see with many of our customers, they'll send out this postcard and the CTA on the QR code will be driven driving people to a video a video where the head of customer service has a brief introduction. And then you get into, here is how you use this. Here are the best ways to use this. Ideas and examples of, you know, hey, here's the best way that our best customers use this product. And, and so you turn that opportunity more into, I care about you and how you are receiving value from this thing that you have acquired, right? It's important to us that you actually use this and you use it in the best way that you can, as opposed to forget it, you know, we're done with you now, right? Uh, but but a, a, a company is only as successful as its customers are successful with the product. And so, you know, it's very, very important that you communicate with your existing customers to make sure they are at least getting a chance to get the most value possible. And so that's uh, often uh, a great step in the purchase process. I love this example. Like, thank you so much for it because yeah, this, this customer success part, this is actually where it, where it starts. Like this is the purchase is like the moment where, you know, 
expectations meet reality. So then actually, if you can actually help people with like, yeah, making sure that they use the product to the fullest. When we think about fashion and apparel, it's probably about like making sure that the things you've bought will last for years, not for days, right? Um, so how, how so, to care, how to care for this. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Right? So wash, you know, the, the ironing, you know, whatever it is you're going to be doing for this particular piece of fashion, how to store it. Mm -hmm. And for all those, like, you know, content marketing, uh, people that we, uh, love so much because we, uh, together with Anna, you know, we're part of the content marketing team. So yeah, there is this. Great content idea that, you know, how to create content like post-purchase designed to actually make people, you know, like use the products better. And, and basically this will result in, yeah, like biggest, like greatest um, customer satisfaction. I have this one e-commerce here in Poland. They sell vinyl records. And I really appreciate the fact that every time they send you a parcel, they, they, they write thank you on the, on the, on the packaging. So, you know, somebody from a team, like the person who is actually, um, just, uh, make the wrapping the, 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 the package together, you know, this person is also like writing something like personal and it's there for you. And I can imagine that, yeah, it, it, it really like, you know, creates something cool. So even now, yeah, it just popped up because I, 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 I've got this emotional connection with, with this, this person. Well, it, it says that we care. It, it says that, you know, we've built this thing for you and, you know, we care. We want you to be successful with this. And if you're having trouble, reach out. We, we want we want to help you. Exactly. So the, 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 the last stage in this like loyalty loop is this like, you know, like post purchase experience. So it might be long or, or short, you know, depending on the on the product or on the, or, or the service. But here, I haven't seen much activity. Like, okay, sometimes there are those like um, e-commerce platforms help with that because usually they have some uh, transactional emails, you know, like surveys, um, just basically asking people if they would like to, like NPS, yeah? So how likely are you to recommend us to a friend or family member? Um, I don't know. But, but apart from those like transactional mails, it's only like a handful of companies that are active in this area. So they like reach out, they ask you, okay, are you satisfied with, with, the, with the product you've bought? You know, do you have any, any feedback for us? So I'm really surprised because, because this is like, you know, the moment where you can definitely, you know, you, you have a lot to share with, with your customers, but you can also learn so much from your customers because you could actually, you know, ask them for like feedback, review, anything in particular. Um, so what, what is the role of, of, of direct mail? Yeah, like, like, you know, any time from the purchase to another purchase, hopefully. Yeah, so there are a couple of things there. And we see the same thing that you see. You know, the least amount of energy is applied to the post-purchase process. Um, but that means there's more opportunity there, right? And, and, and still. Because because your competitors aren't doing that, and if your goal is to stand out, if your goal is to do more than your competitors, it, it represents an opportunity. So at a high level, um, this is going back to that initial uh, use case we just I described. It we'll often see direct mail being used to uh, focus on the email non openers. Number one at a high level. Right, like so. If you have a, if you have a campaign, email is a no brainer, right? For uh, for post purchase communications, and and often direct mail will be plugged into uh, some automations that are focused uh, around uh, reaching the non openers, and and so uh, the other thing that we see, depending upon the product, there will often be a cross sell or upsell opportunity after 30 days or 60 days you purchase this product now this product is often used with this product or uh, because you bought this you may be interested in this 
right? From so from a from a a fashion standpoint, it might be an accessory to go with uh, the the uh, initial purchase. Um, and then uh, and then the other thing that we see quite a bit of for subscription businesses is an anniversary based direct mail piece. And so if you have a renewal after a particular period of time, there will quite a bit we do we're now seeing more of this a piece of direct mail to go out and complement the email marketing around the renewal. And so those are a couple of examples of what we do see. But I, I see of, of these four stages that we discussed, I think that this is the area of least investment by marketers and, and probably the most opportunity to actually stand out. There's a, a, a big, a lot of energy being applied now to community. And, and I've not seen a lot of campaigns that are focused on driving engagement into community. Uh, but that might represent a very good opportunity. I really like this angle. So I wanted to ask you, like, you know, what would be your tips? Like, how could we use direct mail to actually help us build community? Um, so, so, yeah. Well, Definitely, you know, there are, there are certain like examples that come to my mind too when it comes to, to email marketing, but I think that it might be a bit, you know, easier uh, in the online space. But what about direct mail and, you know, what about the offline community building? Yeah, well, I, I would say, again, I would use direct mail in a complementary way here, right, uh, to reach those that are not responding to uh, other channels. Um, and and I think the important thing from a creative standpoint is to uh, is to convey the the feeling of the community, the emotion uh, that one gets when uh, one participates in, in a community. And you know, direct mail offers uh, a different emotional response because it is highly visual. And it, it is physical, and it's something that you know you must hold in your hand at least for a few moments. And and so uh, you know that would be my suggestion would be to you know focus the the uh, energy around uh, direct mail as a complementary channel, and and cr create a real emotional impact around the feeling that you get with engagement in the community. And to finish, I have a question I don't usually ask people, but I'm really curious nowadays about this topic in particular, because we're talking about something tangible. And I think that's where it becomes more personal, more intimate. Do you have any example of any campaign that either you ran or one of your clients ran that really just stole your heart that you were so inspired of that impressed you utterly? Yes. So um, here in the in the states and, and in Canada as well, um, direct mail is used uh, quite a bit by nonprofits and charities, and for these very reasons. And and so um, you know, one of our customers has a uh, nonprofit that is focused on homelessness. And they've developed a very innovative way to uh, help stop homelessness before it actually happens. And, and so a very effective, novel way of intervening uh, in um, the housing courts before people are evicted from their homes. And, and so uh, we've seen multiple campaigns from this customer that tell the story of these people that you know are uh in the system and and you know are are on their way to being sent to the street but are able through this service to stay in their homes 
and to successfully move beyond the financial crisis that led to this particular situation. And, and so um, heart rendering, emotional, and highly effective. Uh, and, and so, um, you know, direct mail is, is very, very useful to tell these types of stories because you can have a highly visual postcard, you can follow it up by a long letter, multiple pages with lots of information. And, and it's, um, you're much more likely to read a longer letter than a long email. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's true. Particularly if you've already been hit in the heart by a visual, by a postcard, and then you get a letter, right? And, and so it, those campaigns are very effective. And it's beautiful. It's amazing that you're talking about nonprofit. And thank you so much for sharing. I think we had a, a, some great discussion. I love that we dove into some specific ideas and examples. Uh, in you know, I think uh, this is a, a channel that is being rediscovered by marketers. It's still early in this process. Uh, there's now technology that makes uh, this entire process easier and faster and more integrated with everything else that you're doing. And so, you know, I, I would suggest uh, go to postalytics.com. We have a ton of content in our blog, best practice information, uh, and, and we have a free account if you're in the States or in Canada. Uh, at this point, um, you know, we'd love to have you use the software for free. And, and you can learn and talk to us as you have any questions. Uh, and we'll be coming to the EU in the future. Uh, and so we're excited about that as well. Fantastic. I can't wait for you guys to conquer EU. For all of our listeners from North America, please do try out Postalytics because so far it sounds amazing. Thank you for like, you know, working towards like collaboration, not competition between like, you know, online and offline marketing, but actually to make it like, like for, for creating a platform where actually you can combine these two and, and be like, you know, really effective in, in the multi-channel marketing. So cool. Thank you so much. Oh, you're very welcome. And thank you for having me. This has been a wonderful discussion. Wow, I really enjoyed this episode. And, you know, it's like now I can see opportunities and I really appreciate the fact that companies such as Postalytics create software that actually allows you to do things that you haven't even considered. Because I don't know much about other European countries, but in Poland, the quality of direct mail is exceptionally low. Like this is something you would just get out of your inbox. You don't even look at that and your heart is broken because you know that, you know, we cut down trees to produce this. So I hope that, you know, the future is brighter and that marketers will be more conscious about how they approach direct mail and that actually software and automation will bring some reason to, to, to this to this channel. I couldn't agree more. And I got to admit, it does come through in the interview, but I was so excited about some of the ideas I never even thought of because for me, direct mail is so outdated, so abused by governments and lame bureaucratic instances. So it was really exciting and game changing to see that you can actually do really creative things about it and connect digital world with the physical one in such a simple manner. But I think it's also very important not to forget about the sustainability of it all, because as we know, our environmental resources are finite, that it's not endless, and we do have to take care of our planet. And unfortunately, direct mail may not be the most environmental way for you to go. The trees are being cut, deforestation is an issue. So we do have to be mindful of that. And try our best to save our home. That is our big blue ball called planet Earth. 
So I think I'm going to try to skip the marketing message today. And instead, I'm going to leave you guys on saying that you can download our podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or Spotify so that you can listen to it and go ahead and plant a tree or something. Operation Automation is backed up by GetResponse, the marketing automation platform that's been on the market for over 20 years. Subscribe for more juicy insights. And remember, automate, don't complicate.